So now what we want to do is determine the equations of motion, assuming that we're given the masses, the stiffnesses, the dampings for each floor, and then the forcing functions that are applied to each floor. And we want to find the equations of motion. And really all this does is, is take us back to some basic physics and, and equilibrium equations or dynamic equilibrium equations. And before I do that, I want to make sure I define a few things here. I'm going to say that my internal positive sign convention for any cuts has the shear on the left side of the cut going downwards, the shear going upwards on the right, normal forces internally positive when causing tension, and then moments causing compression at the top and tension at the bottom. So this is my positive sign convention. I'll give local or elements a local coordinate system U V like this. So this would be the orientation. So essentially what we're doing here is if we're going left to right on a horizontal member, this is the sign convention that we're going to use. Another thing that I want to do is define for us what I call the interstory drift or relative displacement between floors. And I'll call that delta. And here, this would be for, let's say, floor number two, the relative displacement between floor two and floor one. We're just going to take that as x2 minus x1. And the same thing for the relative displacement of floor one. This would be x1 minus x0, or the ground. And in this case, there's no ground motion, so this is going to be zero here for us. And we'll say the relative velocity, I'll call this delta 2 dot, is equal to x2 dot minus x1 dot. So now that we have this defined and we have these conventions defined, we, let's go ahead and do the first thing. The first thing we're going to do is cut out mass 1. So I'm going to cut and cut here mass 1. And I'm going to draw that free body diagram. And on these cuts, if I take the members as going left to right, so member 1 was going left to right like this, left to right like this, so that here for this first member I would have had I would have defined this as V1, U1, and then for the second member, it would have been V2, U2. So that when I draw my internal loading here, there would be here, this is the right side of the cut, so I would have the shear force going this way. I'll call this the shear force. I'll just call it a spring force. I'm going to break that up into a spring force right here, Fs one and then a damping force FD1 there there could be a normal and there could be a moment as well but you're gonna see that's not gonna really come into play in our equilibrium equation so I'm not gonna write those in right now because we're only gonna do the equilibrium equation where we have a degree of freedom and same thing here if I look at the top this would be the left side of a cut and so my shear force I can break up into the spring component the one that's trying to bring it back and the damping component, FD2, like this. And right here, I have the forcing function that's applied on the outside of this mass, externally applied, P1T. And this is my X, this I'm going to treat on mass one as my external forces on mass one. And this is going to be equal to the inertial term in the direction of motion, where here this is this X1 of T, this is that positive X1 orientation. This is x1. This is my positive x1 orientation. And here I would have the inertial term. It's m1 x1 double dot. And with my FBDs, now I want to apply my dynamic equilibrium equation. And the only one of interest to me is the because my motion is only left to right, I have no angular acceleration of this mass or no rotations going on. So I, I'm going to just stick with my, my sum of the forces in the horizontal. I don't have any vertical mo movement here, so I'm not interested in the sum of the forces in the vertical direction as well. And the spring forces and damping forces the spring force, Fs, is going to be the stiffness of the spring times the relative displacement associated with that spring, or in this case, the relative displacement associated with that floor. So here, Fs1 would be minus K1 times delta 1, which was X1 minus X0 minus, and the damping force is the damping coefficient times the relative velocity for that floor. So here this would be C1 times x1 dot minus x0 dot. And then similarly, 
And again, and here again, the ground is not moving; it's stationary. So we'll say that these velocities for the ground are x zero and x dot. The position and and uh, velocity don't change, so there's zero. And if I work the algebra and I rearrange this whole business right here, what I will end up with is. And now we can do the same for mass 2 or floor 2 to get the equation of motion. I can just draw the free body diagram. There's my cut, external forcing function on mass 2, my shear force broken up into the spring component and the damping component. This is my external work on mass 2 and I set this equal to the inertial side. That's These are my external forces on mass 2 and now I set this equal to the inertial side. This is my plus x2 orientation. And here, my inertial term, mx2, mass 2, x2, double dot. And by equilibrium, and I substitute the definitions for the spring and the damping components. And if I rearrange, then I have here, if I rearrange, and what we want to do is combine the two equations together into a matrix formulation. So here are my two equilibrium equations. And now I want to put them together in, in a matrix formulation. So I'll take all the mass terms together. And if I look at the mass terms, what I'll end up having is M1. And what I have here is an acceleration vector. And then I'll have a damping matrix and a stiffness matrix with a displacement vector which will be equal to my forcing functions. And in shorthand, what's how it's typically done is this matrix formulation is, is written like this. M, I'll put the brackets. We'll say M to rep the brackets to represent a matrix, acceleration vector plus a damping matrix, a velocity vector plus a stiffness matrix and a displacement vector equal to a forcing function vector. And what we have here are two coupled ordinary differential equations representing our two-story structure. And last but not least, in general, as a little side note, the most difficult part of this might be the free body diagram. And one thing you can note for like an n-story structure, no matter where you're looking at, if you're looking at, let's say, mass i or the i-th floor, and you have everything broken up into a series of springs and dampers or, or floors or lollipops stacked on top of each other, then the free body diagram generally looks like this, where this is that this direction is that direction or the degree of freedom, xi of t for the ith floor. And you can just go ahead and set this up. And here in general, again, fsi, where the spring force is equal to ki times delta i, which again is just ki times xi minus xi minus 1. If we include the definition of the story drift, and then for the damping, this would be ci times delta i, which is ci times xi dot minus xi minus 1 dot. And using these relationships, you can do this for any number of of mass spring damper combinations or or the or the floors as well but the next big thing here is to take this information or take this equation of motion and be able to look at the entire system and come up with eigenvalues and eigenvectors so that we can understand the position as a function of time at any location or at least at any degree of freedom of the structural system all right i hope that was useful and interesting Take it easy. Let me know if you have any questions. Structure free.